Okay, um, well, Professor uh, Bhakti, thank you very much for finding the time uh, to, to speak to us here today. Um, I, I can appreciate you're extremely busy at the moment, but um, before starting, I just wanted to say a couple of words uh, of introduction. So, uh, Professor Bhakti is Professor Emeritus of Medical Biology and Immunology uh, and the former chair of the Institute of Medical Microbiology and Hygiene in Germany. That, that's correct, right? Okay, so uh, one of the most uh, experienced individuals uh, in the world to be able to talk about uh, vaccines and in relationship to COVID-19. And I think a little bit of the prehistory of our discussion was we spoke in early 2020 um, and you'd, you'd, you did a very good open letter uh, to, to the Chancellor in, in Germany expressing reservations about an overreaction and I, th I think, well, at least from my perspective, everything you wrote in that letter has turned out to be true. And uh, we had a small conversation again this year, and you very kindly agreed to run through some of the main questions to do with um, vaccine and vaccination. Okay, so I think the first, um, the first question then, uh, there's a little picture of what a traditional sort of vaccine development program looks like. And I guess the first question is, you know, in your view, how much do we know about these vaccines and how much has the testing procedure and protocols is it the same as what we usually do is it different you know what's the level of certainty over the current vaccines well this is not my view it's a fact that virtually nothing is known that should be known about these vaccines starting from the very beginning you know the animal models and um, where is the uh, gene expressed in the cell? What is the half-life? Uh, what is the uh, immunological response of the animal to the uh, uh, to the gene product to the spike? Nothing has been looked at, and uh, therefore, uh, in fact, this uh, these vaccines haven't been uh, investigated at all. So, so really, it's not possible in in your view to to contract those sort of 10, 15 years of process into what we've done over, you know, a number of months, I guess. Absolutely impossible. You couldn't even start doing the experiments that you had to do. Yeah. No, it, it starts with uh, where does this, uh, where do these genes go uh, after intramuscular application? Uh, many people are, are mistakenly, uh, are mistaken when they think that it stays in the muscle. Uh, in fact, it's known that that the, the vaccines all go to the lymph nodes and from there to the blood. Uh, but it's, it's it's never been revealed that there are no numbers to tell us. So all of this is really criminal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and and uh, so this sort of term experimental, which I think you've used is is the correct term to use for these vaccines. Oh, they are experimental. Of course, they're experimental, uh, and the, um, because uh, we're still in the process of evaluating the risk benefit. Uh, this should be, you know, this very emergency uh, uh, use. They've been they've, they've been okayed for emergency use in the U.S. and the same in in Europe. What is this emergency anyway? An emergency uh, is, is, is when you have no therapy whatsoever and uh, you are highly endangered, all right? Neither is correct. Uh, everyone knows that if you are under 70, your chances of getting seriously ill or even dying of this virus is minuscule or almost zero. So uh, no one is at risk. And furthermore, everyone knows uh, now that there are excellent uh, therapeutic, uh, th therapeutic measures that can be taken cheap, safe, and extremely effective. So not even the elderly uh, uh, with pre-existing conditions are uh, seriously at risk. In fact, this is probably the virus infection that can be treated best of all virus infections. So it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's so ridiculous. And then to go around uh, injecting a viral gene into your body that will circulate and um, and reach targets, cell targets, 
that will never be reached by the virus in, in real life. Well, this is not a good idea at all. You know, uh, there is someone up there uh, who, who's taking care of us. I mean, yeah. and, and to think that uh, he or she thinks that uh, we should go around injecting foreign genes into our body is, 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 is crazy. Yeah. I mean, to put it in simple terms, because uh, I, I read some of your work, I mean, you're saying essentially this is inhaled, you know, the virus will come in through the lungs. But uh, what you're saying is these, the, the, the um, vaccines will actually create reactions everywhere, including where they're not needed at all, basically, is that? Yes. Uh, yeah. And that is, of course, the real danger. Because, um, well, first of all, to go back to this crazy idea of vaccinating against this virus, I will never cease trying to explain that these so-called protective antibodies are a farce. They can't protect. Antibodies in your bloodstream can't protect against a virus that is entering through the front door from the airway because mm -hmm. the antibodies are not there, simply speaking. They are not there in the blood. And uh, as long as the virus sticks mainly to the lung, uh, antibodies in the blood are not going to protect against anything. Yeah. They can't. Yeah. Well, let's come back a little bit at the end also to try and work out why there's this been this myopic, I, I guess it's fair to call myopic focus on vaccines. We can try and speculate maybe a little bit why that happened. Um, and then just going a little bit into the next the next piece is uh, there's the picture. And I think you very early on, you raised a number of concerns with the regulator. And I've, I've basically split those into two things, the sort of near term uh, issues that you had with the cerebral venous sinus thrombosis plus clotting. Uh, you raised those straight away. And, you know, I, I just wanted to ask you, you know, we've seen the adverse uh, reaction reports now. I mean, do you feel do you feel you were right, basically? So I think the sort of rule of thumb number is about seven adverse reactions per thousand shots. So. <sighs> I don't know whether I should be feeling this. I think that others should be feeling this, all right? Because we, we said this many months ago, yeah. half a year ago. <laughs> um, anyone who's learned his medicine and biology and immunology uh, would have to have anticipated the same. And I'm aghast that my own colleagues, uh, medics and scientists, uh, <laughs> didn't appear to think that what was so obvious was going to take place. <laughs> because, you know, um, it all started uh, with the knowledge that uh, we have uh, reactive lymphocytes against this virus, against the spike. This has been known now for nine months, all right. Ten, no, eleven months, my God. 11 months ago, these papers were published that uh, everyone who's running around here, uh, virtually everyone has reactive lymphocytes that recognize the so-called new virus because it's not really new, it's related to other coronaviruses uh, and our immune system, the lymphocyte, has a memory and it recognizes uh, the bits and pieces of the spike, which look like the bits and pieces of the other spike. So what uh, must be predicted to happen is that the moment this spike is being produced anywhere in the body, uh, those lymphocytes are going to recognize that the cells are producing the spike and they are going to attack them. So uh, producing the spikes uh, anywhere uh, near the lymphocytes uh, is going to be damn dangerous, all right? Now, the second thing uh, that we asked, because it was so clear that this had to happen, was once these packages, these genes, entered the bloodstream, where were they going to go? And uh, so if you delve into the literature, you'll see, oh, they go to the liver, they go to the spleen. But wait a moment. What's the liver and what's the spleen? 
<laughs> All right. The liver is con uh, composed of liver cells, uh, uh, and you have the blood vessels going through the liver. Okay. Same with every other organ. So, in fact, the, the question was, once in the circulation in the vessel, can those genes ever leave the vessel to enter into the liver cells? And the simple answer is no, because they are too big to leave the vessels. And this is something that is so trivial that it is amazing that people don't think about it. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the genes are entrapped in your vessel wall. What are the cells then that will take them up? And the answer is the cells that line the vessel wall, because those are the cells they contact. So it's like the tapestry on, 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 on the walls, you know, those cells are the tapestry, and they take up the genes, and when they then start to produce those spikes, then they become the targets for the lymphocytes to attack. And that, of course, is dangerous, because when you start scratching your tapestry, that is where blood will clot. Mm -hmm. This is what everyone learns in medicine. You, know, you don't go around scratching the vessels of your wall from the inside or the outside. If you, if you start scraping your skin, then the blood will clot. Okay, That's what the clotting system is there for, uh, to stop uh, uh, the blood flowing out. In this case, the, the blood will not flow out, so it will clot in your vessels. This is always a life-threatening event because depending on where the blood clots you can have a few symptoms or you can have more symptoms or you can have terrible symptoms now when we predicted that the blood clots were going to form as uh, an adverse a major adverse event we didn't really know where this was going to happen because as i told you this experiment is being done in humans. It's never been done in animals. Uh, those guys who developed these vaccines never took the trouble to look. And this is what is so criminal about the whole thing. And those authorities who okayed this and, and you know, and, 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 um, and uh, approved of it, uh, the, the, the European Union, the, all the governments who approved these vaccines, they were, I think they all should be taken to court mm -hmm. because uh, the, uh, they approved of it for, for, for emergency use, for, uh, wh where there was no emergency and where they should have known, and we, we point out this to the EMA, that it had never been excluded that clots could form because there were never animal models that would test this. So we're looking at a whole, you know, it's, 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 um, it's just a horror story. It's a horror story. Uh, millions of, of, of human beings, uh, it's the greatest experiment that has ever been performed in the history of medicine, and it's being performed on, on, on human beings. It's just an incredible thought. And I have to tell you, that um, if you put this video on YouTube, it's going to be censored. Yeah. Because you're not allowed to say this. Yeah, yeah. I'm not allowed to say this, but it's true. And so um, what, what then happened was that uh, all these reports came in of young people, you know, who after the shot uh, got terrible headaches. That's a major symptom, terrible yeah. headaches. You know, dizziness and they started having difficulty speaking, hearing, loss of hearing, blurred vision, all these things. And there's one, one clot that can cause all of these things to happen. And when we heard about this, we immediately thought, knew in our hearts those clots were probably being formed to a large extent in the brain, okay? Not only, but also, because we also got these uh, stories of lung embolism, pulmonary embolisms of young women who got clots in their deep uh, veins of the leg that went to the lung. We got these stories of, of, of people suffering from pneumonia, you know, um, shortness of breath and all the typical signs of pneumonia that would be identical if there were lots of clots forming in the lung.
So it was clear, you know, people are having uh, bleeding uh, because uh, when you when you you have lots of clots forming your body, in the end uh, the coagulation factors are consumed, and then you start to bleed. So everything fitted, and and now we are seeing so many people uh, uh, injured mortally wounded, dying, and no one is doing anything about it. And now they're going to, they've started vaccinating the, the, the defenseless children, defenseless children. And every jab is potentially lethal. Yeah. Every jab is potentially, I'm not so, of course you don't, Maybe only 0.1% will die, but that's a damn lot. Yeah. You know, if you go around uh, putting the jab in a million children, yeah. and it's, it's a thought that is so horrifying, yeah. terrifying. And, and will the blood, does it pass that, that period when the blood clotting is, is there? Will someone get well again and then it's over and then they're okay, basically? Or is it something... Could, yes. No. 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 The clot, clots will dissolve. Yes. Of course. Okay, okay. And 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 there is an enzyme that dissolves the clot uh, in 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 the vessel so that the vessels are cleared again. And uh, this results in the generation of those. Um, it's like you know you have a you have a, a chunk of ice in your vessel and you take a spike and you start uh, 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 hacking off the ice. Those bits of little. Uh, ice flakes that go off. Those are the so-called D-dimers, D-dimers. Listen to this because everyone, listen very carefully, uh, people who run around have D-dimers that are right on the bottom because you don't have clots, okay? If you get a clot, then your D-dimers in blood will go up. These are the little chunks of ice that the enzyme is clipping off the clot, and they can be measured. So I am giving everyone the advice that if you grown-ups want to get this shot, which is entirely senseless and useless because A, you don't need it, B, the antibodies are not going to protect you anyway because they're on the wrong side of the wall, all right? But if you want to do it, go ahead with God's blessing. Uh, but before you do so, why don't you have your D-dimers drawn first and determined beforehand and five to seven days after the shot, just to be on the safe side. And if you are unlucky and you get these splitting headaches, okay, a bit of um, paralysis here and there, <laughs> all right, and you say, well, it was worth it because now I'm protected, you would have luck while being unlucky because you have your D-dimer determination and then you can go to court and <laughs> and get reimbursed for not having been told that this could have happened to you. And that doctor who gave the jab is liable and he's going to pay. In fact, the good news that came to us yesterday was that in Denmark, the first woman is now uh, going to get uh, reimbursed because she went to court. Okay, so it's going to be possible now. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, um, but, but don't go for the children. Yeah, we'll, we'll maybe just come to, to the children in the next um, question. I was just wondering though, I mean, what you've already described about the short term uh, uh, impacts of the clotting is already bad enough, but. Uh, there's no, no, question. sorry, excuse me, let me let me make a circle here. If the clot is in the brain vessel, you see, what happens when, when the blood clots is that the tissues um, in front of that clot are going to get uh, hypoxic, or they, they're going to, uh, uh, there's going to be a, a drop in oxygen uh, supply, and um, they, if it's in the vein, it's the... the the clot will lead to uh, to tissue damage, of course, because uh, whenever there's a clot, uh, the tissues in the whole area can die. And if tissues in the brain, if, if nerves die, they can't be repaired. Okay. 
Uh, so, so, so then the damage can be permanent. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. And I was just wondering also a little bit, um, this disease enhancement where, you know, you, you have a vaccine, something happens, and then as you have a new strain of the virus, maybe in a year's time or so, uh, it turns out that the vaccine actually makes your symptoms worse, this disease enhancement. Uh, I mean, has that been has that been looked at? I mean, I've looked at some of the trials of the old coronavirus vaccines for SARS-1, and it didn't didn't look too good. It, it looked, looked very, think, very bad. <laughs> very bad, right? Uh, OK, so uh, enhancement. Yes, indeed, there is the danger that antibodies can enhance disease. All right. Now, they can do this by many, uh, many mechanisms. Uh, and uh, they must be predicted to do so with the uh, SARS-CoV-2 as well. And that would be, that should have been a reason never, ever to have started this whole crazy business, dangerous business in the first place without first testing rigorously in animal models. And that would have taken at least two or three years, you mm. see. But the, the, the corona SARS-CoV-2 gene-based vaccines are even worse because, you see, they are whipping up, lashing up the lymphocytes. Yeah. So you're going to have antibodies plus lymphocytes. And, you know, your immune system is like a beautifully tuned orchestra. There is someone up there saying how to play, you know. Uh, if the virus comes into your body, then your immune system is going to take care of this virus very, very well. That's why people under 70 will not die, cannot die, because your immune system functions so perfectly, harmoniously, okay? They never play too loud. Now, if you go around lashing, whipping up those lymphocytes to say, yeah, uh, play louder, 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 man is taking over the conductor's place. Mm. And this is very, very stupid and very, very dangerous because two things. First of all, if you get an infection with the virus or any variant, because of course you're not protected, you can get an infection with any virus, coronavirus, and it comes in to your lung, that immune system is going to start bashing up your lung. Okay, it's overreacting. Yeah. Immune-dependent enhancement. But worse still, worse still, if you go around following these foolish politicians and your my colleagues who say, get another shot because of these variants, and you start producing these spikes in your vessel wall again, the immune system is not going to scratch, it's going to take a razor and and that's why, by the way, the, the adverse effects are always worse after the second shot. And if you take a third shot, it's your own fault. But yeah. don't give it to our children. If you take a fourth shot, then the casualties are going to go up and up and up and up and up. And at a certain time, there are going to be so many that you're going to wonder what's going on in this world. Before I stop giving you this, I want to go back to another thing, which is long term and short term. And this is something that has come out since uh, a few days ago. There was a report of Pfizer BioNTech in Japanese that was submitted to the Japanese authorities, where they openly said, revealed, and this is only in Japanese, but it's now been translated, okay, that uh, the mRNA was also targeted to the ovaries, all right? And it seemed to be accumulating in the ovaries. Now, I don't know where they were in the ovaries, but if they were also in the vessels, and why shouldn't they be, then, dear audience, do you know what happens if multiple thrombi uh, occur in the ovaries, you won't, you won't notice it. It doesn't hurt. But, you know, that's where, uh, that's, 
that's why the eggs are. And they die, everything dies very quickly. Okay, so, and by the way, um, placenta. You know, do you know that uh, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, there, there is a, an artery and a vein going from the placenta to the baby? <laughs> it's called the umbilical vein and umbilical artery. Do you know what happens if there's a clot in that um, umbilical vein? A child will die. So, I mean, if these vaccines can cause blood clots, and now it's clear that they all can, and it happens to occur in the umbilical vein, you're going to lose your child. Mm. It's that simple. Just, just on that point, um... The, the, the regulatory information actually specifically include excluded. Um, it said there is no information on impact on fertility and it did provide advice uh, early on, I think. I've got, I've got the wording here, but it's sort of don't do this essentially if you're pregnant. But that seems to have been sort of overridden. You know, they're just going- It's been overridden. Yeah. Pre pregnant women are being vaccinated all the time and taking the vaccine. And I, I can't understand these women, I can't. Yeah. And I'm telling you, uh, if, if, if these women have daughters or sons uh, and they want them to be vaccinated, you better, better watch out, okay? You better watch out. Yeah. Because one day it's going to come back to you. Yeah. I mean, do you think that, I mean, what you're describing now in the ovaries, do you think that is the reason why in the regulatory information specifically said we do not have in any information on impact on fertility, were they leaving the door open to say, look, we told you we don't have any data on this, therefore that's your problem? I don't know and I don't care. Yeah. I only know that what they're doing and what they have done is totally irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. Utterly and totally. And the authorities who have uh, gone the whole way to uh, approve of these vaccines should all be brought to court in the Hague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I got a couple of theories in the end because we might have to cut the end bit off with, with a couple of questions. But um, just on the, the last point also on that disease enhancement, you said how bad it was in the SARS-CoV-1 vaccines. I mean, I, I've read something that there were nine trials over a sort of 10 year period and they all ended in a disease enhancement. So uh, is, is that right? There's a, there's a paper circulating that shows those trials. You know, I haven't counted them. I, I, okay. One trial would have been enough. Okay. What, what, what do you, you know, if you, if you j get the jab and it's, it's like getting a pistol that is loaded and firing it at a child, all right? And if you hit the child once, you better stop yeah, yeah. immediately. Yeah. It is not allowed to use, to administer an agent that brings life into danger under the pretext, under the pretext of protecting against another danger. You can't yeah. exchange one danger for the other. It's not allowed. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I think, I mean, if I summarize shortly, what you're saying is this cure already is many fold more dangerous than the disease. Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, I, hardly anyone, children, there's, there's not been a, not I, can, I can give you the number of, of children in, in the UK as eight children have uh, died in hospital without co comorbidities, at, you know, through the whole pandemic from 13.3 million. So, you know, uh, does, does it make sense to vaccinate the other 13? Well, I three? ask you that, you're yeah. British. Yeah. I mean, you, you, actually, you're educated, I, I, but arithmetic doesn't seem to be your strength. You know, yeah. um, those eight children, by the way, were not all uh, uh, initially completely healthy. That I'm sure. That's that's the split. There's 32 with comorbidities and eight without comorbidities. So it's 40 in total. Comorbidities that were known of. Yeah, okay. But in any event, we're talking, you know, a number from 13.3 million yeah, so, there's no way you could possibly vaccinate 13.3 million with the statistics well, we're already seeing. Well, Boris Johnson uh, seems to be doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your health authorities too. 
Yeah, well, I mean, this is part of the reason we're here today, because I also have children and, and this video is partly directed at them. I've, um, yeah, I have a son and I want him to listen to what you have to say, basically. Uh, he's healthy and I, he needs to hear this, basically. How old is he? He's 18, so... Um, oh, so he's the one who wants to get the shot himself. Oh, he, he's, he's wavering and, I, and I've been sort wavering. of saying... Wavering? <laughs> I think he'll but be fine at the 18, end of the day. he should be able to understand all of this, I mean... Yeah, yeah. I think, I think eight, it's okay, to be honest, but... Uh, if yeah, you were eight, I would understand, but not 18, no. Yeah. So there's, I mean, I think we agree there's absolutely no way this makes any sense for anyone who's young. That's, it doesn't make sense for anyone because anyway. the antibodies can't protect against anything anyway. Yeah. All you're doing yeah. is, is you're, you're playing a sort of Russian roulette. Yeah. Um, I, we know so many young people, soldiers, who, who have, uh, have their, well, they're maimed for life. Yeah. But once you know, you know, you've seen these videos of of, of people are jerking. You know, losing control of the motor control. Yeah. Yeah. That's also one symptom. That once uh, thing that can happen when the clot is in in the brain uh, sinus, and that never goes away. Those people are uh, will never ever lead a normal life again. They are invalid. Uh, they are invalids for life. Yeah. So that I mean, I, th I think I think on the, you know on the medicine side, you've made it so very clear that this is a, an act of insanity to to be doing this max uh, mass vaccination. Make it makes no medical sense whatsoever, right? Absolutely, yeah. it's insanity, yeah. and it's not only insanity; it's it's mass crime. Yeah. So then, I mean, we could speculate a bit. We have to be a little bit careful with speculation, but. You know that there could be a theory that this has just been a political project to make, let's say, earlier mistakes look good. If if you've succeeded in rolling out this vaccine, even though it's medically a disaster, this is just to create some big program where some numbers have been achieved, so the politicians can say, "Look what a what a good job I've done." I mean, there's another way of explaining. If it doesn't make medical sense, does it make commercial sense? Do, do you have any feeling because? You know, the things you're describing, as you said, you, you set that out before vaccination started and anyone should know about the blood clotting. Anyone should know about the risk of disease enhancement, but they still went ahead and did it. And is, is there really any way we can explain? Is it just to create the illusion of success or is it to make money or, you know, is there a reason? It can't be just stupidity, right? Well, um, I have my own thoughts of this, about this. The one thing I, I, I will not hesitate to say is that I'm sure that there's an agenda behind this and that uh, it, one, one of the uh, uh, one of the aims of this whole thing is to get the gene based vaccines going, the mRNA. Uh, this has been the ultimate goal that has to be reached uh, by those who, who have planned this. It's all planned. Now, why they planned this, I don't know. And I don't even think I want to know yeah. because it could not have been a humane reason. Yeah. Could not have been a reason for, to do good to the society, to the world. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, does that, does that mean because you know, this is such a big program and there's so much money and political capital behind it. You know, we just left, what you, you doctors for COVID ethics and, and your colleagues, are you just left in these now alternative platforms trying to trying to sort of put, stop this as much as you can? Is there any, I mean, I know you've already done work with the, the European Parliament uh, parliamentarians saying you will be liable. I mean, is there any other way, this is the way it's going to, Go, I guess that you you have these voices of opposition and dissent, but there's a machine that's that's pushing this forward. Yes, but you see, uh, we're, we're reaching a stage now where um, we have a glimmer of hope because it's clear that all these gene-based vaccines can trigger blood clotting, and therefore it is clear that they are all a danger. Um, in this case, you see, um, the 
people who are performing the vaccination, these are the doctors themselves, mm -hmm. will become liable. Mm -hmm. And uh, the patients or the individuals who suffer from these adverse effects are going to be able to take them to court. And uh, this is another, you know, it, it's another level now uh, of criminality. If you go around uh, 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 limiting uh, human rights, like what it, all your politicians are doing, your Boris Johnson, um, you you can protest against it, but they will always find a reason to say it's 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 legal. But if you start shooting at people, uh, then there's nothing. There's nothing that uh, that that uh, that can um, excuse that. This is this well, I just is want to make clear injury. with with the virus uh, with the vaccine. Uh, it's effectively a sort of Russian roulette where you are shoot, shooting in the sense. Yes, of, and since it's known, yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, yeah. and 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 it, the 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 populace themselves uh, will stand up and say no because which. Who, Parents can can stand the thought that their child, the life of their child, is going to be endangered for nothing, mm -hmm. which yeah. they, they, you know, yeah, yeah, it can't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's um, I think that's been very clear. I I, I think um, I mean really anyone listening to this it's crystal clear really all the dangers involved and they're in no way justified no uh, but as you see all around you seeing that this is happening yeah. this is the other thing it's happening well, i did i did actually want to ask you one thing about the liability i don't know if you've seen this one but in italy they've come up with a a law which will uh, make vaccination compulsory for um, healthcare workers and there is actually a um, get out clause on liability that the doctors administering the vaccines won't be liable provided they comply with the vaccine manufacturer's instructions and uh, yeah. have you have you seen that basically it came out of I've heard about it okay because it sounds like they're trying to they're trying yes, to course. eliminate the thing that you were saying that they will be liable yes of yeah. course of course, they know that they are now uh, under immediate uh, danger because all of this has been happening quite quickly. Um, the, the, the thing is, you see, that uh, uh, all these people didn't realize, I think, that they, they, they misjudged uh, the severity of these adverse reactions because they hadn't thought about the lymphocytes. Uh, mm -hmm being part of the part of the game mm -hmm. uh, bad game mm -hmm. uh, and 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 now they are a little bit at loss of what to do mm -hmm. you see um, they are even it's already out you know AstraZeneca has issued uh, an official statement that uh, its vaccine could uh, cause blood clots it's mm -hmm. now out it was it's been circulating among all the pharma, uh, pharmacies here in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so they openly say that this could be the case. Mm -hmm. And now what they they're going to try to do is to to say before you give the vaccine, give the uh, 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 person and uh, whatever heparin or <laughs> low dose heparin, you know, low molecular weight heparin, whatever, uh, to prevent the clot. Mm -hmm. which is which is criminal you, mm -hmm. you can't do this you know? yeah. <laughs> but but that's the way they're going now with yeah. the help of course of uh, their own colleagues and the politicians yeah 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 okay but i uh, i think um you know i think um, it, it must be very difficult for you to stand up and you know be the opposing voice and uh, i'm be, not the so. opposing voice there are thousands yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah. I'm just one of thousands. Yeah, this yeah. is what uh, the, the British also have to realize. Are we are we uh, mainly talking to the British today? Yeah. Uh, that's what you have to realize. All right. Um, there, are, the number of people, doctors, and scientists, who are saying no to all of this, outnumbers those scientists who are saying yes 
many, many, many fold. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it's it's quite unusual because of the impression that the other side gives is it's just a few minority people. It's because it, the media don't don't talk about. Yeah, it. I the think BBC. it's the same. Oh my God. Yeah, it's it's the same with lockdown. If you really listen to the experts on epidemiology, they say do not do this, and it's just the small number somewhere close to policy making, and that just carry on and do it. Yes. Uh, it's, it's very strange. You know, when I was a, a, a boy, young man, uh, I thought the BBC was the most remarkable, wonderful. Uh, uh, yes, BBC was sort of the best that could ever have happened yeah. uh, uh, in a civilized world. And now the BBC is doing the same thing that the Germans are doing. How come the British are now being led by the Germans? This yeah. is not the way to go. Where's all? <laughs> when I see this, I say, okay, it's the end of Europe. It's the end of civilization. Mm -hmm. When those guys who have always shown you what not to do are being yeah. followed. Yeah. The past no, I, I'm, I'm, also, I'm also very worried about the, um, the impact on democracy and society. You know, it's, oh. a, it's a big, big question. And it's very yeah. worrying. Uh, I don't think many people realize how worrying it is, to be honest. Well, the one one thing that really upped uh, upped our moods was uh, London in mm -hmm. mid-May. This, uh, you know, thousands. How many thousand were there? Well, I think the BBC because, said there were 350 or so. Yeah, the, well, nobody knows for sure, but I think the first was about 250,000 in at the end of April. Um, and in May? I, did, was I wasn't there in May. I think uh, roughly the same. Uh, and I think your mainstream guys, including the BBC, were talking about a couple of a hundred. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. It, 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 I wonder that they, they, they don't feel ashamed <laughs> of a themselves. Of, a lot of strange things are going on, and I think a lot of people share your disappointment with the BBC. I, I'm also the same. Uh, you know, I grew up with it, and I'm just disappointing to see where it is now. But uh, that's, it, that's the reality. All right. Good. I think you've made well. You've made it very, very clear. I think that's a superb uh, explanation. I thank you for that. I really hope we can get this out, and as many people can see this as possible before the powers that be try and uh, remove it. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I've included also links to two of the papers that you've done as um, uh, doctors for COVID ethics. So there's the paper, which is the letter to the parliamentarians, and the the last one, which I think was the third letter to the European. Uh, medicines um, agency so that that's here in, at the end of this video and thank you very much and also the, the link to the website will show uh, on donations as well how how your organization can be helped out because I think you know you, you'd, I mean you've been right all along and it's I think the work is so good to try and keep the pressure on all elements of the system so that they know that there's going to be liability however yes. far away that is in the future it's not just going to be carry on regardless of, of the damage being caused, that there will be consequences and maybe that will slow up this process. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Right. So thank you very much. That's been very interesting. My pleasure. Okay. And good luck to Britain.